Hey, that's much better than a blank black screen. We do want to see the draft, don't we, guys? It says face it league up here, but we're going to be trying to qualify for the uh, SLI Invitational. This is the open qualifiers, the semifinals. There are actually remaining. two semifinals being run concurrently, so something happened Five with the schedule. Seconds. That's out of my hand. I don't, I don't know, guys. I'm like, Laura's going to be bringing you Gotten Team versus, well, I guess, how do I get rid of this? Uh, there we go. I guess just the Dyer. They're called YYY. Why, why? I don't know what that stands for. I have no idea what that is, but that's fine anyway because we'll just uh, call them GT and, and the other guys and the Dyer. Uh, but yeah, again, we have two best of threes. Uh, hopefully, the two, both semifinals end at around the same time, then a final of the best of three directly afterwards. It's been a hell of a long time since I've mic'd Jockey, at least remaining. here on the, uh, you know, on Unreal Games, games where there are actually, you know, Five half, half decent remaining. players. Uh, Here's hoping because uh, you know not many people have uh, have heard of gotten team or why 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 and uh, you know I'm not I'm not gonna pretend to be a South American Dota aficionado like I'm not an expert I'm going to admit that to you guys Radiant but uh, I do not recognize that many uh, players in this game right now but regardless of that fact I appreciate the new drafting screen I thought it was just like a TI thing but it turns out it's an everyone thing so we get to see this uh, new hotness here on this game and take a quick look at the bands. I think two out of the ordinary. Remaining. Earth Spirit, definitely a, a little bit more of a uh, of kind of Five an X-Factor hero remaining. there. But I mean, you take a look at all these bands and so the, at least the vast majority of them have one thing in common is that they are mostly just tempo-based heroes. I mean, you get the Night Stalker, Nyx, and the Earth Spirit. You know, maybe a little bit more on some of them than the others, but really they all accomplish more or less the same thing that you do want to control how the first 15 20 minutes of the game go and it is going to make a lot of sense for the uh why 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 side of things to ban out both the earth spirit and the nyx assassin i think you know banning nyx is pretty much a no-brainer like someone's gonna do that unless someone wants to play against it uh you don't want to play against nyx assassin guys it's a bad idea but uh yeah trying to protect your nature profit first pick who i don't really think is a, is a great hero that's just me though you guys know I have some weird opinions on some weird heroes. Nature Prophet is one of them. Maybe I just suck at the hero. It is true that I suck at the hero, and I'm trying to make sure that that doesn't affect my decision making in how good this hero is, but, you know, there's always going to be some personal Ten bias. That ability to keep the enemies off balance, that ability to jump wherever you want Five to, seconds. and split remaining. push uh, is going to be of great value Dia because it keeps them open. I mean, it means that they don't have to commit any sort of you know giant team fight type of lineup they can play with a lot of single target focus they can play with a lot of minus armor type heroes and just start bouncing around the map destroying towers heroes like ta who usually get desolator work pretty well in that uh, really doesn't seconds, it is remaining. not clear as to whether or not ta is good here but they have that luxury of, of going for Five those type seconds, of plans and if you do want to grab a lot of team fight get an ancient Radiant apparition team. why not it works out pretty well or an earthshaker I hear Earthshaker is pretty good at team fighting. I don't know, guys. So it does keep YYY pretty well open. GT, on the other hand, I don't know what happened to their flag. Looks like there's really heavy wind. Why is it, like, not aligned? They definitely just messed that up because this the left half of their flag is on this part of the flag pole. So Five they had to, like, move remaining. this here and then they get the other half of the bird like this. So they, they messed up. They got to fix that. But Shadow Shaman and Faceless Void is certainly an interesting combination. Uh, as far as lane is concerned, it will be able to lock out some of the weaker lane heroes if the two go together, which uh, right now isn't really clear. Not really a great answer to a Nature's Prophet if they end up head-to-head -head in lane. But, you know, you do get the wards with that Chronosphere, which you, know, you may not want to use all the time. But between the Chronosphere and those, uh, those wards from the Shadow Shaman, GT have a lot of versatility in those team fights. I mean, you're just getting the wards alone, you're looking at easy Roche time, you're looking at uh, easy towers to take as well. And Nature's Prophet, Ten perhaps a little bit more so than other heroes, will be able to resist that type of push just by virtue of Five having those summons, being remaining. able to have a, a pretty long range in his attack so he can kind of pick at those serpent wards and try to get rid of them from a distance. But GT are setting themselves up for a lot of team fight. It is a lot of combo-based team fight, however. So if Nature's Prophet is able to get a little bit of farm, pick up Shadow Blade, more importantly, a uh, Sheep Stick or an Orchid or one of those type of items, then you know, just throwing in that combo breaker towards GT can very easily screw them over in those team fights. And a Shaker, of course, is a very similar 
type of play style. Just, hey, my hero buddy is getting jumped on. Well, I have a Fisher. It's a pretty good spell. We see GT taking out that TA, mostly to avoid the situation I was describing earlier, as well as that Lich. Again, all these single target kind of base Five heroes that will remaining. get uh, YYY into a position where they can just bounce around all over the map and just get further ahead by pushing in waves. It is, you know, the split push to take down towers Radiant is one thing, but also the fact that when you're being split pushed, you're losing out on a lot of gold if you're not actually going back there and defending. So you're just not going to be getting as much gold as the enemies. You got to find yourself some way of breaking out of that. They need some way of dealing with the nature's profit. Tinker and Batrider to more premier... Heroes to deal with the Nature's Prophet now remaining. kicked out, trying to protect that hero even more. The GT Five have a Faceless Void already. Remaining. He's pretty good at dealing with the Nature's Prophet. You get a little bit of mobility there. Chronosphere, between Chronosphere and a Time Walk, you have a lot of catch range. You're not always going to, you know, be able to land that combo necessarily, but, you know, there are possibilities there. Shao Shaman with Blink Dagger, very similar, just Blink Shackle, Blink Hex, or whatever, and... You get the shock, uh, the option of going for the best summon in the game, Maelstrom, to deal with those uh, summons. But then again, you could always just say, no, screw you, Nature's Prophet. We're going to counter you, and we're going to counter you hard with Spirit Breaker. Storm Spirit also is a possibility, I suppose. But Chi-Chi now responding with the Spirit Breaker doesn't really eh, do much with the heroes that they have right now. Spirit Breaker, Faceless Void, get bashes, I guess, but outside of that, doesn't really do hell of a lot together. Shadow Shaman Spearbreaker, though, do have the potential of being very Ten aggressive seconds, around the map if they find their opportunities. And the problem is, is that it's going to be pretty difficult then to find their opportunities, remaining. I would assume, with now the Necrophos pick from YYY. I mean, Necrophos is notoriously difficult to kill, period. Especially when you're dealing with a purely physical-based hero like Spearbreaker, you just don't do much damage when the enemy guy is, uh, is ethereal. So Ghost Shroud is going to be an absolute killer here. Faceless Void and Spearbreaker... Uh, will struggle up against that spell, Faceless Void, if he didn't have plans for it. He sure as hell does now of getting a Diffusal Blade. He kind of does need that answer to Necrophos if they're ever going to kill him. Because not only do they have to deal with you know, the heals and the, the, the Shroud, just Necrophos by himself in a vacuum, they also deal have to deal with any potential save here that might be coming up. Uh, the Shaker as well, again, that combo breaker. An arrow, though, from Mirana will definitely help. Uh, speaking of save heroes, though, uh, I don't really know how likely these guys are picking up an oracle but it's actually looking pretty slick here like you got necrophos on your team already is perhaps you know, not gonna have that much offensive Ten power versus the spirit breaker shadow shaman but it's really good versus the mirana i do like the mirana Five though seconds from remaining. gt i mean you you have a lot of team fight already you have a lot of initiation you kind of pile on a little bit more which is not exactly a bad thing it's 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 just a thing. You get even more of that when you pick up the Marana, but more importantly, it diversifies their damage. It gives them a little bit of AoE to kind of deal with that Nature's Prophet pick. And it also will get them a little bit of extra magic damage to deal with that Necrophos. And it's a hero that can get Diffusal Blade. So you get Diffusal Blade so you can do physical damage, or you just let him go Shroud, and then blast him with the Star Storm, and hopefully that'll be enough to kill him occasionally. You never know. Okay, I'm just going to check a couple of things in the background, guys. Again, it's been a long time since I've actually cast anything. Let's make sure that uh, everyone uh, everyone in the admining department is okay with this. And it seems like they haven't yelled at me yet, so we got to be doing something right. Hello, new hero, PogChamp. Warlock is definitely an interesting hero. It's not exactly that save hero. That I was talking about earlier, but they do have a hell of a lot of AoE now. Let me tell you guys, Fatal Bonds is a skill. Fatal Bonds is Ten definitely a skill, and when you are going up against a team that is most likely going to be playing uh, kind of seconds, very really? clustered around the Chronosphere and or those Serpent Wards, being able to, again, combo break with that Chaotic Offering and lend a little bit of aid with even that, uh, that slow from Upheaval is, is not irrelevant up against the GT side. Now, they do have ways of just ignoring that leap. Or, you know, just charge away Spirit Breaker. You get Time Walk from Faceless Void. So it's not going to be the end all, but it's a lot of extra team fight here. And whoa, we got a Meepo. All bets are off, guys. I officially do not know what is going on anymore. This doesn't look like it's that bad for a Meepo, honestly. Like, they do have a lot of healing, which is one thing. They have a lot of uh, they, they have a lot of ways to split push Nature's Profit, getting Meepo more and more opportunities to get those kills. 
And if you look at GT's Five squad, they don't really have all that much AoE, nor do they have the type of single target focus that you want in order to deal with a Meepo, kind of like a, a Necrophos Scythe. Because if you have that, you only got to kill one Meepo, or you even focus one Meepo. But they don't have that. They have a Chronosphere, which is okay, but the damage they can put into the Chronosphere is kind of limited. Pugna is going to be the last pick for GT, giving them that, uh, first of all, AoE to deal with that Meepo. will also let them, together with the Shadow Shaman, push a little bit more aggressively. And we're just going to check one more time. I've been reinstalling and installing just a whole bunch of shit, guys. So if something's broken, you got to tell me. For instance, I just remembered that my mic is not open because you don't you uh it's this one, right? There it is. You don't use open mic when you're uh playing Dota unless you're an ass. You might do it if you're an ass. I'm not though. How long are we in the screen? This is also my first time like seeing this new draft screen right now, so I don't exactly know how long it lasts. But there we go. We got the Plague War, the uh, not Plague Wards, Serpent Wards, as well as that Pugna Blast. They can kind of out tempo the game GT unless they get really shut down in lanes. And that is definitely a possibility. I mean, Shaker can definitely make things happen. Nature's Prophet can abuse lanes like very few other heroes can with the uh, Triant pulling and stuff like that. Prepare and of course you got Magician Necrophos, he's kind of difficult to kill off. Meepo will be the kind of weak link here of the YYY squad. But then again, like Meepo, I'm pretty sure Meepo has universally bad matchups in lane. Like literally every single hero you're up against in lane is not a favored matchup for you. There are just different degrees of bad matchups. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to be one of those games where he is, yes, not going to be in a matchup where he is going to be stomping everyone, because that's just not how Meepo works, but he will be able to do fairly well. And uh, this is probably one of the least bad matchups if it is just going to be a Meepo versus a Pugna over in the mid lane. Take a quick look at how this farm and these items are distributed. Yeah, so it's just going to be an off lane Marana, safe lane Void here for GT, uh, once again, that then Pugna can go towards the mid lane. The real big problem here for the Meepo is that, uh, I suppose there's a chance that Marana rotates down, although between this Dire Observer and this one, uh, he probably won't get hit by an arrow. Uh, the big problem is the charge. You can, if you're very quick with your reflexes, use Earthbind and kind of cancel that before it lands. But uh, Pugna, he's got the damage, he's got the range, he's got the blast. So I would expect Meepo to, most of the time, be kind of hurting, like uh, half-ish HP, 66%, kind of ballpark around there, and if you should land a charge, you could very easily put this Meepo in the ground. On the other end, though, why, 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 is that eight Y's? I think it is. Looks like they're going to be doing some uh, pretty standard stuff right now. Nature's Prophet botching his block feels bad, man, yet he's still going to taunt about it. We got Shaker with boots and four clarities. Cannot get more roam heavy than this. You don't really need a Shaker to ever babysit your lane because that's just not what the hero does. Uh, that's not what Necrophos needs. He really doesn't need anything, actually. He has so many tangos. My god, this guy's got regen. He even has a very early magic wand. Uh, I mean, it is great for Necrophos, of course, and he's got a million branches to start out with, so it does make sense. How the hell does Meepo have 5 CS already? What happened here? Did he just do some magic poofing that I just didn't see? Seems like it. But Shaker, yeah, with this roam build, does want to at least try to get this Meepo a little bit of space. Getting kills is kind of a bonus. Is there level 2 on Meepo? There is, but there's no Earthbind just yet. He's more interested in getting levels because... Uh-oh, Courier! No, not like this! Meepo, you messed up! You done goofed, son! I sure hope that Boots or Salve or both was worth it because... You know, any CS lead that he may have had is now gone, first of all, and is now going to be gone because of the courier as well. So that feels mighty bad. That's... I mean, there are mistakes that you make. That shouldn't really ever be one of them. If your walking courier gets picked off by a bounty hunter or gets sniped by, like, an earth spirit over here, whatever, man, it happens. But getting a walking courier sniped in lane, that's something I would do, man. And I'm terrible at this game. Just kidding, guys. I'm the best player in the world. You guys know. 
Earthshaker, though, is just messing up this Marana. She's gonna get her Bounty Rune, I guess, but this can take a hell of a lot of damage. Oh, guess is wrong, though. 50-50, I guess, with no vision there, so it's like she could end up here or here, and uh, it's wrong. Not a big deal, though. You got a million clarity is what they're for. Let's take a quick look at this bottom lane. Nature's Prophet is gonna have to be very careful here. Also, because when the Spirit Breaker sees an opportunity, there is nothing that Nature's Prophet can do. Except for just not be in that place in the first place. We'll see what he can do with these tree and see how many uh, kind of creeps he can abuse by pulling them this way and stuff like that. Seems like he's getting a decent amount of experience, so it's not too bad for the Nature's Prophet. No charges coming in just yet, and as I say that, charge in. How lucky is the Bash? There's one, 17%. They need another, though. Shadow Burn is gonna get bashed again! Do they have Shock? Oh, they don't have anything. Bitchito is gonna try to go in for it, salving up through the tower. Shadow Burn still not dead. We'll cancel the salve. Now there's another charge coming in. They ain't done yet, but there is more help coming in. Warlock's going to arrive, but it's too late to save the Nature's Prophet. What can Mental Disorder get out of this? It doesn't seem like anything, actually. He can't actually ever kill a Faceless Void. That's just not what Warlock does. Can he kill this MC character because he just got his ass whooped by walking trees? There are a million heroes TPing in. And he's just dead. They get first blood, but man, was it a mess. It is going to uh, bring a couple of heroes over towards that bottom lane. Shaker, as well as that Warlock, moving out from top. Again, Necrofrost doesn't need the health, but just the lack of pressure they're able to apply to the Marana. It's going to get her, at least in theory, a little bit more space. Would be true if she wasn't at like 10 HP and pretty much close to death on this top lane. Ron is having a little bit of a tough time, but uh, she is not exactly a super strong off laner. It's okay in some situations, but up against a Necrophos where you're just down in damage, you are down in control, and you're up against multiple heroes, it's really tough to manage that lane. Unfortunately, you don't really need a lot as Marana to find success. If you have level 1, you have an arrow, and that means you can find success. I'm only kind of kidding about that. Like, you could just kill this big bird or whatever, and that's a good amount of gold. Or just throw out arrows and get kills, which is also, I hear, a pretty good way of getting gold. Right now, though, keep an eye on this Meepo. He's got power treads already. MC, the Invisible Shadow Shaman, is unfortunately, like, one experience away from level 3. Can he steal one of these creeps? Oh, yeah, that feels good, man, a Shadow Shaman. Gonna get two point shackle and see a couple targets. He'll start right clicking. And here comes the charge. Help is coming in, but Meepo's already very low. Get some help from the Warlock. I don't think it's enough with the Fissure. It might be actually. They hex him up. Still trying to go for him. Shackles will be there and it will eventually get the kill on the Meepo, but again, costing themselves a Shadow Shaw and Mental Disorder on the way out. Black Soul giving chase. Gets in one more right click and is on the right side of his sprout, so he should be fine as well. They'll shrine up and now turn their attention towards the Spirit Breaker. He's gonna get Fissured. He doesn't have any mana to do really anything except for try to TP in a hidey hole somewhere. I don't really know if that's going to work. Needs to run for 20 mana. Good luck, bro. He spent all his money, so yeah, he's dead. Space created, I guess. They kill off the Meepo, though, and that is big game. Gotta kill off the Meepo. What level? What, what levels are we looking at? What button's levels? We never look at levels. He's actually behind the enemy bug. That is not a good place for Meepo to be. Meepo just as a hero, uh, I mean, it is still very early on, and he's still very high level, so he's not doing poorly per se. But he is a hero that kind of skyrockets in levels just by virtue of how he gains experience. So killing him off keeps him off the map for a very long time because of the increasing respawn timers, and it just gives your team so much value and experience and gold. Plus, you don't have to worry about a Meepo farming the map or jumping your characters or killing your dudes or anything like that. So killing off Meepo is going to be the priority pretty much 24-7 for the GT squad. You can see Spirit Breaker, again, this hero is just so difficult to deal with if you don't have the Shaker in place. No one really is able to counter the Spirit Breaker outside of the Shaker. Again, Meepo is possible. But we have... I do not know how good this Meepo player is. They're going to look for Black Soul over in mid. Sprouted up has no way of busting through here. He's going to get this life drain and the charge on the enemy Meepo. Can they kill off with the bash? They can! Oh, Jakir, what a god. 17%? More like 117%, am I right? This time has mana to charge out. Fissure's there, which means it cannot interrupt the retreat. He's going to charge out straight to a Warlock. Oh, he got too close. What, he canceled it? What? Oh, his creep died. 
Oh, that sucks, man. That sucks so much. So he he plays like an absolute god, like a deity to kill off the Meepo, rolling at 17%. It is still 17%, right? Yeah, there it is. And then his creep that he's charging to top lane dies. And now they're gonna Chronosphere and Necrophos. Black clearing the arrow path, and with the charge coming in, they do kill him perfectly. I was gonna say, like, they have to chain stun him perfectly because otherwise Ghost Shroud, Death Pulse, and Magic Wand, and he's at full HP, but he doesn't even have Ghost Shroud, so we did not see that one coming. And I'm not really sure why you get Magic Wand first item as Necrophos without getting Ghost Shroud. Like, you're not up against a Bat Rider or like a Bristleback. It's okay value, but it, it's only real good value on a Necrophos because of Ghost Shroud. Whatever, man. He's gonna teleport back in, and there is another arrow potentially waiting for him. Or just a charge from an angry cow. Arrow's gonna come right in. Fissure is gonna stun onto three, giving Necrophos some time. He does level up Ghost Shroud. Can he get the heal off in time? He's not casting it. He messed up. Oh no, Necrophos, why? And now the Earthshaker kind of got you baited in. He's just taking a beating charge back in from the Spirit Breaker. Will kill off two. That was not the play. He didn't go Shroud, right? I'm not crazy. So I'm like fairly sure that if he go Shrouded, Death Pulse, and Sticked, because he used his Magic Wand, but he didn't uh, he didn't go Shroud for it, then he would have been fine. And now another charge coming in onto the Warlock. Black Soul is here. Long Decrepify, and the Life Drain is... Oh, just not enough. Mental Sword gets out of there. This time, Warlock. This time, you'll survive. But yeah, uh, he didn't Ghost Shroud, so he didn't get that additional healing. 75% is quite a bit. I want to say it was close to a maxed out Magic Wand, if not completely maxed out. In charges, that is. Yeah, GT starting to amp up the pressure right now, and oh, there's going to be a little squabble in the jungle. MC is going to be just fine, looking for an opportunity to shackle, knowing that Fissure is off the table. Pugna right now maxed out in the blast. Pretty standard Pugna stuff here, just maxing the as well as the blast and life drain. Not quite yet in a position where, as a team, they can go for tower pushes. Black Soul himself, if he does get his hands onto a tower, can destroy it so very quickly. And Shaman Shaman's not too far away from level 6 either. Radiant structures are fortified. That denial attempt Radiant's and then self-fortification. They'll lose their tier 1. Radiant's not the end of the world. What's Meepo looking at right now? Ooh, Diffusal Blade attack. on the Meepo. Gotta get rid of that uh, Decrepify on both ends. I'm just talking about Diffusal Blades being built up by GT. Trying to do with this Ghost Shroud, but... The same is true up against the Pugna. Gotta be able to right-click those uh, Decrepify targets somehow. Plus, just value-wise, it gives you a lot of agility as a Meepo, and that's never a bad thing. Uh-oh, he cancelled his poof out of there. Is that gonna end up killing him? There's no level 6 yet. Black is not gonna get any spells off. He's gonna look for an arrow. Hits it on the wrong one. Chronosphere now, only onto one Meepo. Is that good enough for the Light Drain? It should be. He'll take him out. Where's the health? Shadow Burn's gonna come in from the back, but Nature Prophet doesn't really have that much here, so that's about all he can do. Yeah, got him. Necrophos was coming in as well. TP not available. And uh, Shadow Burn? He really wants a bounty rune, I guess. Yes. He's being charged. He's got a haste rune, so he's pretty quick himself. Surfing wards are now up from the Shadow Shaman. Of course, the Pugna got a decent amount of mana regeneration, to say the least, between the Soul Ring, Arcanes, and right now an empty bottle, but hey. He'll be able to destroy any given tower. It doesn't seem like the Dyer's team, YYY, are, are really super eager to fight. Whereas GT, they're just itching for it, and they'll find a really big opportunity up towards top lane. Hex is there with the perfect shackle. Star Storm's coming in, life drained. Ha! <laughs> Where's your Ghost Shroud this time, bro? There's nothing you do about that as a necrophos. Smoke in and around. There is a Chaotic Offering here, but there's not that much health. Chaotic Offering Echo Slam is really powerful. And if the Shaker was an offlane Shaker, level 8 or something like that, I would say maybe this could work, but it's going to be really tough, especially when their smoke is just broken. Now the Spirit Breaker is just pissed. You smoke on me, I'm going to charge you, and then get another Lucky Bash. They're going to try to Moonlight Shadow out of here. Black, though, is going to get a Golem dropped right on him. And we'll get Echo Slam into the dirt, but they take the tower. Uh, what are you doing, Spirit Breaker? That is not the play. Charge out? You know, easiest game of the Spirit Breaker's life. He's invisible and charging out. This is what Spirit Breakers build up towards, right? Shadow Blade, Spirit Breaker, right there. He's fine. They take the tower, though, and that's really all that GT wanted there. Losing the Mirana, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty bad deal. 
but they do pull out a huge huge cooldown from the enemy warlock they expend a pretty large cooldown themselves i suppose with this uh, serpent wards but it is entirely worth it for gt to kind of spend their mirana to get a tower on the top lane they can keep doing that pretty much forever as long as they have serpent wards and or chronosphere which right now they don't they'll get it soon enough though charge in move aside rock and then he cancels. And Arrow will be absorbed. Spearbreaker trying to nether strike his way to kind of blink out of there. And we'll get over the Meepo, actually. Are you serious right now? Wrath of Nature's coming in. Another poop will kill him. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, I think they thought the Warlock Golem was going to time out at around the time the charge was going to land. And that would have worked out pretty well for them. Timing slightly off. And, oh, this is the stuff of nightmares right here. Pugna, level 10 has a freaking arcane rune in a bottle with ether lens and still enough mana to just spam 24 7 so yeah this is gonna hurt this tower is gonna have to be fought over there is a chronosphere plus mask of madness here on the spaceless void check cooldowns 40 seconds till moonlight shadow outside of that gt are at full strength right now 87 mana lull 3.5 second cooldown thank you ice frog for delivering this balanced rune into the hands of the pugna He's loving it right now. He has the Aether Lens also, so he doesn't even have to get too close to the tower to kill it. Hey, look. More Treants to farm. There goes the tower. Now everyone's out because they want this Meepo charge coming in. They don't have another strike just yet. I don't think they need to. Although, oh, Poof's coming in. Not enough to insta-give this Faceless Void. I think with old Mask of Madness, where you take, like, additional flat damage, that probably would have been enough. But minus armor Mask of Madness is... Obviously not going to do much up against, or have many negative ramifications up against Poof. Kill off Meepo yet again, and GT are just out-tempoing this game right now. They still have a Pugna, they still have a Shadow Shaman Mass Serpent Wards, and they still have a target. As long as they have these targets, their game plan is very, very easy. Charge in, never stop killing. They're going to fight under the Shrine. Can they burst them down? Yes. They will maybe lose someone here. Scythe onto the cow will kill him off. Not even the Die super cool well, Grim Reaper site. Leave a purulent corpse. But still making pretty good trades across the map. Spearbreaker is an expendable hero for the GT side. They're not really spending that much themselves. Again, another Moonlight Shadow expend. Not the end of the world. Nepo was the yeah, Fusel Blade, double rates, plus those power treads. He is pretty darn far. Level 13 is pretty, pretty nice for him right now. Really, he's not fully activated until he's able to get in these fights. He needs help from his allies, four staff or something, or just a hero in the middle of freaking nowhere to get those kills. Rip in pieces, Pugna. Arrow coming in will land, but I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Alright, so just lucking into a random kill feels pretty good, man. Of course, that kill will start accelerating him towards that blink dagger, which will facilitate more and more ganks exactly like that. Oh, bro. I'm not really sure about that. He gets it immediately purged off. I have a haste rune. I'll be fine. He does place an observer ward. I don't know if these guys are paying attention. Seems like they either were not paying attention or just simply don't care. Either way, they'll call it. It's a Shadow Shaman down. No split push. Coming back their way. Got three Meepos in the area. Gotta watch out for that Chronosphere, but outside of that, this tower take all that much damage they'll fall back I mean, the shadow shaman pick off is nice but it's not a huge timing if they kill off faceless void in that manner hell yeah you go for that push but he's still alive and kicking Oof. mask of madness and a maelstrom the mask of madness is pretty standard nowadays for faceless void maelstrom is i want to say mostly a consideration for this uh major prophet pretty good versus the Meepo as well, but I mean, just the two items together give you so much insane farm rate. He's going to be skyrocketing in net worth. He's actually on second place. I mean, it's a safe lane void, so what do you expect? But the amount of farm that this guy can get around the map is pretty insane. I mean, not to mention the fact that you, know, you get lightning versus the Meepo, which is kind of nice. The potential upgrade to Mjolnir later on with the static charge is really sweet up against the Meepo. So, you know, it, it's... It's a pretty easy item pickup in this game. It'll give him so many varied bonuses. Moonlight Shadow. 
I don't think was spotted by the Dyer necessarily, but the Dyer don't really have much vision out on the map. So they're completely blind right now outside of one Dyer OBS on top lane, which is like not even a good lane to have right now. Uh, an observer or to have right now. Like no one's gonna be up there pretty much ever. They'll dodge a gank themselves, go straight into Roche. Miko can do this. A little bit extra stain here from the next boss. They are light steel. Is there a flat floating around? Did Nepo have a lifesteal talent? Forgive me, guys. I, I will be the first to admit I'm not a good Nepo player, and I have zero clue what the Nepo talents are. I actually have no idea, because I haven't seen this hero, like, in 2017. <laughs> He's got a lifesteal talent. There you go. And now he has a blink dagger. This is the timing that uh, this dire side was looking for. You have the chaotic offering. You have a scythe, of course, and hey, double blink daggers. Triple blink daggers? Oh my god, Earth Taker has his as well. They can easily out initiate GT as long as they don't get clustered up and hit with a big chronosphere or get picked off beforehand. Oh, they're gonna jump in. Mass poofs into the shadow shaman with a vision chain stun. They will take him out, but so much damage being returned back into this one Meepo in the front will go down. He does have an Aegis. It's like he might respawn right here. He responds where the main Meepo was. I think that's right there. Yeah, it is going to be there, but the site will cut down Black Soul in the back. And YYY are streaming forward. They'll catch Murana with a fissure. Instead, opt for a tier 1 or a space cow, or maybe even both. Jakir, you can try to TP out. Earthbind is going to fly right overhead. They'll take the tower pretty easily. That is the power of mass blink daggers all at around the same time. You can just make fights happen so quickly. And the enemy team, they don't have the blink daggers. They can't react as fast as you can attack. So now for GT, they've taken down all three tier 1s, but that's about it. With Radiant's their Pugna top and top Shadow Shaman. Top Honestly, top. I was expecting a little bit more. I was expecting them to try to tap into those tier twos. Didn't quite happen yet, and now they're kind of uh, in the position they want to Radiant's be in, except it's reversed. They want to be the ones pushing, Radiant's they want stuff. to be the ones tempoing out the map, and instead their tier ones will all fall here. Ooh, Earthbind. Completely blind. Will catch onto a poor Shadow Shaman. Oh no, not again. Not like this. Poor guy, never stood a chance. He would like never stand chance either going for Urn. The push stops for no one. Can't stop, won't stop, ever. There's Moonlight Shadow. Radiance middle out tower from the Radiance. Attack. And they're trying to split push top lane. Again, Faces Void can do this very easily with his build. Arrow will fly and completely whip. And now they're gonna jump in. Mass poofs! Annihilating the Pugna this time. Jeez, this is just painful to watch. Oh, you don't want to be there, Spirit Breaker. I assure you, there is fortunately for him no fissure, but there is an angry Meepo. That is maybe even worse. See, Nether Strikes one. That won't do anything though. And the one that gets arrowed is the one that had the heal on it. Oh man, this map is starting to fall apart for GT here. Meepo is just one of those heroes, man. You gotta know if the enemy team can play a Meepo and prepare for that possibility. Add that to the list of like Huskar, Drow, Broodmother, these heroes that can just pop out of nowhere and just completely screw over your game if you're not prepared. It's only a 3k lead right now for the Dark YYY squad, but perhaps the more damaging thing is the fact that uh, GT are supposed to be the ones ahead right now. Their scaling is pretty darn good with the course they've selected, even with their supports, they're pretty top notch at uh, kind of scaling into the late game. But can they actually deal with the super farm, super high level Meepo, who's level freaking 18, 21 minutes in? Not really sure, man. They definitely do need blinks or to get the initiation off. It's hard to do one without the other, right? So far, the charge has been working out for them to get these kind of one random heroes. One random heroes. I literally just said that. These one random hero pickoffs. But once the dire sides starts getting those blink daggers, they'll be able to react easier to those charges. And because they have all the blink daggers, they're just more likely to be grouped up. So any one guy that you charge, is most likely going to have two or three guys behind him. Another tower in danger right now. Is everyone here? Mostly everyone's here. Now yeah, officially everyone's here. Oh no, you don't want to be there, Marana. The way is shut. And now you're dead. Scythe up. She thought she was being cute by just, you know... Cutting the wave a little bit, just trying to hold the tower for a couple more seconds. 
And then a million heroes come out of nowhere. This Diffusal Blade is doing a hell of a lot of work, and not versus the Decrepify, just as kind of a soft disable. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Shadow Shaman, run! Okay, well, looks like running worked. You'll be fine. But the Tier 2s are starting to fall here. Why, why, why? Why, why? Only one more left around the map. And it might line up in such a way where they'd be, they're going to be able to take down the last tier two. Or just straight Echo Slam the face of Void. Burst damage is enough. And they'll catch another one as well. Just for extra bonuses. Easy two kill. Three heroes are down. And still, all of these kills. With uh, with no chaotic offering being spent. Mass nets and celebration. Just the scouts, of course. If you catch someone, you just poof in and kill them. There is a Blightstone on one of these heroes, which means that Meepo is going to be doing that much more damage. And, uh, oh, well, they're going to charge in with Moonlight Shadow. Fissure is going to connect onto two, however. There's the Dust. They do still have that Chaotic Offering, and everyone's going to poof out. GT, they cannot chase for this. If they try, they will all die. I'm a poet, and I don't even realize that I am one. Yes. But yeah, easy play. Walk in, take a Tier 3. They were focusing the melee, unfortunately, so all that damage will should probably be healed. I guess they can try to just keep on beating this in. It is very high risk unless they get a pick off. Oh no, not again! Ugh, that's like the fourth time. Well, I was gonna say they should back off and go for shrines, go for the top tier two, or just get a pick off and just look for racks. You can do that also if you want. There's no uh, scythe. Using it on a Shadow Shaman is eh, only kind of average, but they still have that big bad rock to drop. And this time, they're going to only commit onto the range racks and with only one hero, unless everyone's going to jump in. They're YOLOing hard right now. Nets are going to be thrown out, locking the Pugnet down. That is going to be racks number one taken. Charge is going to come in. Chronospheres, Meepo's left behind. He will fall. And now it's almost irrelevant as to whether or not they use the Chaotic Offering. They'll try to do it, but it's not going to do all that much except for help them disengage. Meepo got way too separated out from the rest of his squad. That charge from the Spirit Breaker, absolutely perfect. Not charging the Meepo in the front, but charging the heroes behind Meepo. When you do charge, you push him back and oh no. Where have I seen this before? This looks a little familiar. Have I seen that before? I think so. I don't know, maybe it's just deja vu. But yeah, Spirit Breaker pushing everyone back, getting that pick off on the Meepo. That is exactly what the GT side needed. But again, the damage has kind of already been done because they yoloed so hard. It worked out for them, taking down the melee racks. Shrines, of course, are open to be taken. And I'm pretty sure Meepo will be able to shred those like nothing. Faces Void is doing pretty darn well for himself in net worth still. I'm kind of impressed. The problem is, though, is that uh, Pugna... I mean, late game Pugna is a powerful hero. The problem is that uh, you're up against Diffusal Blade, so you're a lot weaker in that regard. You're up against Scythe, so decrepifying yourself to buy time is not exactly going to be advised all the time. And a quote-unquote late game Pugna is only really late game Pugna if you have a late game amount of farm, which currently is not bad, but it really needs to be better. I mean, just, still, all the tier 2 towers are up for the dire. These should have been mostly destroyed, if not completely destroyed, by this uh, soon-to-be 30-minute mark. That's pretty much like what the Shadow Shaman Pugna duo is supposed to do. Just take down towers and get a little bit of space, and again, tempo at the map. By the way, guys, when I say tempo out the map, I mean take tower, take kill, take tower, take kill. Kind of just rinse and repeat forever. When you do that, you keep the enemies from farming, you farm kills yourself. That's kind of what I mean by that. I realize not everyone would know what I'm talking about there. If foes trying to leave, they will use an epic on mental disorder instead. I'm not really sure about that. Chronosphere, though, lands on pretty much everyone. Where's the damage? They need it right now. They're going to focus on people and they'll take him down. And they'll also catch up to the Necrophos in the middle of nowhere. He does have a pipe. He's very tanky, but apparently not tanky enough. He'll get his Ghost Shroud out. Luka's actually healing. He'll throw his life towards the Shadow Shaman. That's not even going to kill him. And he'll get drained out as well. Shaker, trying to survive, gets four staff down to the low ground, but still the life drain follows. Nature Prophet's like, screw that, man. You guys got yourselves into that. You have to get yourselves out. And with a big Chronosphere from the Faceless Void and a big catch on Amipo, who just didn't realize there would be a fight happening here. 
GT are gonna buy themselves a couple of extra minutes to farm up around the map. Meepo is working with a lot of net worth, but a lot of that net worth is tied up in kind of items that don't really help them survive. This is a purely aggressive Meepo build. And again, I mentioned earlier, you need to get these initiations off if you're a GT. It's been really difficult for them up to this point. Yeah, it still is, honestly. But the element of surprise, just taking a fight here, because who fights here when you've already lost melee rounds? And, and rain drafts, apparently. The, the whole set is down. Uh, but taking a fight here is just unexpected for a Meepo. Such a long respawn timer. GT, they are not building a Blink Dagger on the Shadow Shaman. Pipe is going to be insane. Glimmer Cape is going to be also insane for pretty much the exact same reasons. But they really, really need to find a consistent way of starting this fight. Shadow Blade and Spirit Breaker is fine. But it's not going to work all the time. It will eventually just be a ton of detection around the map. Radiance top Ooh, shrine. The Cheeto. Careful there. There's a surprise sheep stick here on the pug down and a scythe. No, there's no scythe, but he couldn't time walk. He BKB'd and didn't time walk. Uh, he just done goof, right? Arrow's gonna come in, connect on again the Meepo that's being healed. That sucks. Focus down the Nether Ward. That's a basis void down for a full minute. And in that minute, well look at that, Roshan's respawning. It's kind of unfortunate for the dire side, but I'm not really sure if they will be able to do anything about this, even if Basis Void is alive. Meepo does it so quickly. Maybe not as quickly as I thought. It's it's still pretty fast. But he's only like kind of half assing it right now with Meepo Meepo Lings, Meeplings? Meepo clones? I don't know what they're called. There we go. The team will clear it. And there's a cheese on the deck as well. Necrofoss is gonna give GT a full view of what just happened. I don't really know if they can play around that though. And now this is where things get really hard for GT. Because it was only like, you know, 50% hard before. Now it's like closer to 80% hard. Does that make any sense? Makes sense in my head. Oh, they're gonna go in for a Necrophos. That's really brave of them. He does have the cheese. They got a chain stun and burst out immediately. No, that's not gonna happen. He's just gonna cheese up and here comes the reinforcements. There goes MC, Scything the cow, Echo on the cat. And that's three down immediately. Faces Boyd's like, screw that guys, I'm out of here. Yeah, Scythe and Echo, they all may be down, but you know what? Meepo has a blink sheep in just seven seconds. Vegito, if he, even if he does land the Chronosphere, he can kill maybe one guy. I don't think he can kill more than that. If he, oh, he's gonna get hexed up, and now the Fissure onto two is perfect. That's the Faces boy down. Pug is gonna try to decrepify him, just life drain his way out of there. It's not gonna happen. Luckily for MC, he's on the right side of the Fissure. Unluckily for him, Meepo doesn't give two shits about the Fissure. He's gonna jump in anyway. That's a full team wipe. And that's going to be game, actually, because they're just going to go straight for the tier 4s. Because they can't get Megas, because they're still tier 2 up on top lane. Oh well, man. They'll be fine. No one's alive. No one's going to be alive. They can make some sort of stand in 5 seconds, but they can't do anything with these heroes. So I think that's just game. Oh, dodge the arrow. Oh, GG. Okay, there we go. You guys hear that? Did it say Virtus Pro's victory? Am I crazy? It definitely said that, right? Either way, this guys is what happens when you one pick up a tempo draft and are unable to tempo out, and two are up against a Meepo when you didn't expect a Meepo because they had no answers to that Meepo at all. Now they had a couple of good points in the game where they were able to find, kind of find him off and alone and get him picked off. You need better than that, man. You need better than that. So why, 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 why? I'm gonna take down game one here versus G Team. I'm Mike Loris, guys. It's been a pleasure casting this game for you. Hopefully everything has been smooth. I'm gonna try to get into game two ASAP. This is again the semifinals. So we're gonna have uh, up to two more games of these teams. Then a uh, one of these teams is gonna play one of the other teams playing in the other semifinals in the finals coming right after it. Don't go anywhere, guys. I'll be right back.